It often happens back in the stacks in the archives that I open a box whose contents I've never seen before. Looking for photographs about mountaineering one day, I followed up a reference for the photo albums of a man called Beverly Cochran Cayley. I just wanted images of mountaineers. I lifted out the first album, intending to leaf quickly through the pages, but an unexpected page of typed stanzas made me want to know this particular mountaineer. Here he is in the early 1920s, a young Vancouver lawyer with a BA in English and a passion for the mountains. His friends call him Bev. He spends most weekends with his friends climbing local mountains like the Camel. Longer journeys take them further afield in BC and into Alberta and Washington. Bev's camera comes with him into the mountains. He loves to create panoramas of dramatic mountain scenes. The widest unfolds accordion-wise from the album. Panorama Ridge, August 1926. I see him emerge out of the pages of his albums. A dog lover. Ted is a faithful companion on many a trip. A fun lover. A gentle wit. An athlete and risk taker. A lover and philosopher of the mountains. I love this photo taken in June 1924. It shows how strenuous mountaineering can be. That's Bev on the left. The whole group, beaten, soaked, burnt, tired and disgusted. Bev and his friends are self-sufficient. There aren't any rescue helicopters over the horizon. But camp provides its own opportunities for goofing off time. In 1926, Bev climbs Mount Garibaldi. It is his last climb. I wonder how that trip seemed to him, whether he felt strangely short of breath. Later that year, he learns he is terminally ill with tuberculosis. He dies in June 1928. In July, his friends climb an unnamed volcanic peak in his honor and officially register the name Mount Cayley. Is it because we had to have the sun to take them that they look so happy, everyone? The book has only light and laughter. You would say there was no day of rain or tears through all those pictured years. And were we out of doors as much as these insistent glimpses show? It seems as if we never had to go inside the house at all, but scorning roof and wall just pitched our lives beneath the blessed trees. The chronicle that memory keeps of what befell in those same days would sometimes lead us back by shadowed ways where sorrow sleeps. This little book is wiser, and its pages tell how all was well. <laughs>